Senator Cruz, congratulations on Wisconsin. You've had a very, very big week, haven't you? Well, thank you, Mike. It has been a terrific week. The win we had in Wisconsin was was a landslide. Uh, we won across every demographic. And, you know, it's amazing. If you look back to three weeks ago, three weeks ago we were down 10 in Wisconsin. Three weeks ago all the mainstream media was saying Wisconsin was tailor-made for Donald Trump, was a perfect state for Donald Trump. It's an upper Midwest state. It is a heavily industrial state. Uh, a great many blue-collar workers. It does, doesn't have a terribly high evangelical population. And, and by, by every mainstream media pundit, it was supposed to be Trump's for the taking. Mm-hmm. And what we saw on Tuesday is we won by 13 points across the board. But I'll tell you what was so encouraging, Mike, is that, that we won virtually every dem- demographic. We won women. We won men. Well, we what, won young we, people. And we won working-class people. We won... We won very conservatives. We won somewhat conservatives. Right. And even among independents, we tied Donald Trump among independents at the same time while sweeping everything else. I was going to ask you about that, that category of somewhat conservative, because I, as I was looking at the exit polling data as well, it was, it was impressive to see that if, you, yeah. if you're uh, you know, a Cruz supporter and, and, and the Cruz campaign, and you, ha- Senator Cruz, have to be pleased with that because one of the accusations has been, well, he's a consistent conservative, he's too conservative for people who consider themselves somewhat conservative. It looks like somewhat conservative Wisconsin voters went for you. Uh, by a significant margin. And, and really what we saw in Wisconsin is what we're saying nationally which is Republicans coming together and uniting. The, the, the really, the key, our focus is on unity. You know, 65 to 70 percent of Republicans nationwide recognize that Donald Trump is not the best candidate to go head-to-head with Hillary Clinton, that if Donald is our nominee, Hillary wins. Hillary wins by double digits. I mean, it is a bloodbath. And the stakes are too high to hand the White House to Hillary Clinton. And what we're seeing happening every day is those 65 to 70 percent of Republicans are unified. You know, Mike, in the last two weeks, we've seen four big victories in a row. It started with just over two weeks ago in the state of Utah. Right. We won a landslide victory, 69 percent of the popular vote. We got every single one of the delegates. Then several days ago in Colorado, two congressional districts voted. They elected six delegates. We won all six, went six for six. Then North Dakota, North Dakota voted. Of the delegates who have declared their support, 18 are supporting us. One is supporting Donald Trump. I'll take an 18 to 1 margin mm-hmm. any day of the week. I, I, want to, I want to get to that delegate count in just a moment yeah. and talk about what you what you have said repeatedly is your path to get to get there. Let's talk though about that sense of unity, Senator. You're aware, especially standing there listening to the guy screaming about climate change in the Bronx yesterday, and uh, the cover of the Daily News with the vulgarity. I mean, yep. uh, some people are so angry, and the media is committed, many in the media committed to try to prevent you from getting the nomination, but it also is emanating from from supporters everywhere. I, I post, to give you an anecdotal example, I gave, I've just posted last night, hey, Senator Ted Cruz, fresh off his Wisconsin victory on the Mike Gallagher show last night, then suddenly I get this barrage of angry posts, oh, you're the you're a sellout, Mike, you're establishment, you know, I'm, I want to support the Republican nominee who, sure. who, has, who is going to go up against Hillary Clinton and beat her, I, I, I don't... So how do you get to that sense of unity? How do you win over, should, should you beat Donald Trump, how are you going to get Donald Trump supporters to support Ted Cruz? You focus on the issues that the working men and women of America care about. Listen, mm-hmm. people are frustrated with Washington and the corruption of Washington. And, and as you know, Donald has been enmeshed in that corruption for 40 years. You know, the one group that Donald won in Wisconsin was moderate. Uh, because Donald has been supporting liberal Democrats for 40 years, the failed policies. Donald has supported open border Democrats for 40 years. And so the key, I think, to bringing people together is focusing on real solutions to the problems. As president, my priorities are three, jobs, freedom, and security. We've got to bring jobs back to America. We need to bring high-paying jobs. We need to bring manufacturing jobs back to America. What I focused every day on in Wisconsin, what I'm focusing every day on right now in New York, is bringing jobs back to America, repealing Obamacare, passing a simple flat tax, reining in the EPA and the federal regulators that are killing small businesses, abolishing the IRS, stopping amnesty, ending sanctuary cities, and the effects of all of that. Mike, we're going to see millions of jobs coming back to America, back from China, back from Mexico. We're going to see wages 
finally going up again. And we're going to see young people coming out of school once again having hope and optimism and having job offers. That's what this election's about. I, I, and Senator, the reason we're getting so much energy is we're focusing on real solutions for real problems. I know that the jobs has been a, a foundational aspect of your campaign. I, I'm glad you, you, you brought it up as well because I'm in Orlando right now. Tonight I'm going to be emceeing a, a Job Creators Network event. This is, of course, the, the Bernie Marcus organization. Um, recently, Senator, uh, Job Creators Network conducted a poll of small business owners only one in five plan on hiring. Of course, you know how tragic that is for small business owners, for American workers. Why aren't more people talking about it? And, and again, can, can you reiterate your message to the small business owners listening to us and, and to the small business owners of, the, of America who are, are struggling to survive, Senator Cruz? Uh, Mike, you are exactly right. The, the, the heart of our economy is not Washington, D.C. The heart of our economy is small business, small businesses all across this country, two-thirds of all new jobs come from small businesses. Look, I'm the son of two small business owners. I grew up in, in Houston with my parents owning and running a small family business. I went to work for my parents when I was a kid. Uh, they paid me a dollar an hour working as a computer operator in, in, in their company. And, and it is small businesses. If you want to kill the economy, you do what Obama's done. You hammer small businesses and we get the economic stagnation we have. My priority as president will be lifting the boot of the federal government off the back of the necks of small businesses. You know, right now, for the first time since they've been recording the data, more small businesses are dying than are being created. That is a tremendously dangerous trend. If I'm elected president, we're going to turn it around. We will see millions of new small businesses, millions of new jobs, and we will see wages going up as employers are fighting to attract talented new employees. That's what we can do if we get back to the principles we know work. All right, let's get into the X's and O's for a moment in the moments we have left. One th- the magic number, 1,237. Everybody yeah. acknowledges you have an impressive uh, uh, you know, c- b- operation on the ground in all of these states. You guys know what you're doing. Uh, I was watching last night analysis that talked about some of these you know, p- delegates, Rubio delegates, uh, you know, maybe getting those. Do you say over and over you have a path to get to 1,237? If you don't, then what? Well, we do have a path to getting to 1237. As I mentioned, we've won four states in a row with big victories. Uh, indeed, since Marco Rubio dropped out of the race, we've won more delegates than Donald Trump has. And, and what we've seen is, is most of the Rubio supporters coming to us. We're consolidating support among the Republican field and unifying the party. But if it ends up, I mean, you asked what happens if we don't get to 1237. Right. Well, the next most likely outcome is nobody gets to 1237. That means We're going to a contested convention. And in that case, we'll come in with a ton of delegates. Donald Trump will come in with a ton of delegates. And it'll be a battle to see who can earn a majority of the delegates who've been elected by the people at the convention. If that happens, Mike, I think we will be in a very, very strong position. I believe we will win a majority of the delegates at the convention. Uh, Because... Many believe, I don't mean to interrupt you, but many believe that, that if it gets to that point, the Republican establishment, which views you and Trump as, as outsiders and sort of renegades, will never give, give you the nomination. What do you say to, to people who have that worry? Well, look, I, I understand that worry. And, and are there Washington dealmakers who would love to snatch the nomination away and hand it to a consummate insider and dealmaker? Absolutely. But it ain't going to happen. Number one, if they tried that, You'd see a revolt among the people. If we have elections in 50 states and the Washington dealmakers say, we don't care what the people said, we have somebody else we like that you've already rejected or that right. didn't even run, people would stay home and we would hand, hand the election to Hillary Clinton. We'd be forfeiting the general election. But let's talk as a practical matter. Are the Washington dealmakers dumb enough to do that? Probably. But they can't. The only way to win the Republican nomination is to get a majority of the delegates. We're going we're gonna to arrive in Cleveland, if, the, if it's a contested convention, with roughly 1,000 delegates supporting Trump, maybe roughly 1,000 delegates supporting me. They're not suddenly going to rush behind some D.C. insider. It is under the, under the Republican rules. There are only two names that will be on the ballot, mine and Donald Trump. To be on the ballot, you have to have won eight states. We're the only two who will meet that threshold. And if that happens, a majority, I believe, will consolidate behind our campaign. We will win a decisive majority at the convention, and we'll go on to beat Hillary Clinton. As the polling shows, I beat Hillary Clinton, and Donald loses badly to Hillary Clinton. 
You know, uh, final thought, and when the minute we have left, I saw, um, I think it was Pat Buchanan last night who said, gosh, if, if Ted Cruz and Donald Trump unite, if they, be, if they teamed up, they'd set the nation on fire. They'd be unstoppable. It's, it might be hard to put the toothpaste back in the bottle, but do you see any scenario where that could happen? Well, listen, I, I would welcome Donald's support. Um, one of the things I've tried to do in the whole course of this campaign is not get personal, not get nasty, not attack anyone's integrity, even when others have gotten really nasty and personal attacking me. I focus on issues and substance, and one of the keys of that is it means at the end of the day it is easier to bring the team back together. We've got to unite to win, and my focus is on winning the nomination and then winning yep. the general, and so I would love to have Donald's support. If you can make that happen, Mike, I'll give you the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> I just like to see it for the good of the country, and I just am tired of the animosity. We're going to get there. Senator Cruz, always appreciate you joining us, sir, taking time for us on the Mike Gallagher Show. Thank you, sir.